What's up guys, Dan here, Cole Cracker, Bushcraft in the shop. Um, and we're gonna be looking at this right here, an ax head. So with the winter months here and the super cold weather outside, some of you I know may not want to journey out into the wilderness, although I highly recommend it. Go outside, have a good time, even if it's not for a long time, go out and enjoy the cooler weather. But while you're home, you can get lots of projects done for the spring and summer, all those cool outdoor adventures you're gonna have. Um, so you can sew some gear together, make some leather goods, um, I don't know, make a whole bunch of stuff, right? And just keep loading and unloading your gear, buy some gear, all that good stuff. But one of those things that you might have laying around your house or had for a while is an old ax head. Maybe you bought it at a yard sale, maybe you heard me talking about, hey, go to a yard sale or a flea market and buy an ax head and restore it. Maybe a friend that knows you're in the outdoors was like, hey, here's an ax head, maybe you can do something with it. And you sit and you stare and you're not sure where to get started. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna talk about taking this ax head all the way up to making it a nice usable ax. So um, yeah, let's get started. Now part of the reason that I'm in the shop is most of you are probably going to be at home with your ax head and you're gonna head out to the garage or down the basement and you're gonna just start messing around with it. And the first thing that you're gonna notice is that you gotta get the old handle out. Now in this case, the handle was cut off. Maybe you were lucky enough to score an ax with a nice handle you just have to restore the handle if that's the case great if the handles cracked or broken cut off anything you're gonna have to get the wood out of the eye of the ax and trust me from experience that can be a very daunting task so I want to go over a couple ways you can do it right here in your shop or wherever you're at and then if that's not gonna work if you don't have any of these tools or you can't get the job done guess what you can head out to the woods it gives you an excuse to get outside in the woods I'm gonna show you what you can do with that there and then we'll be right back here putting the handle on so all right let's get rolling so to get the wood out of the head the first thing you need to know is that the handle was driven in this direction so you can generally tell what the top of the axe head is versus the bottom um, you're gonna look at that there might be a step wedge which is a little metal wedge in there um, depending on what direction that's in sometimes you got to pry that thing out the best way to do that is to get a vise put your axe head in in the vise and then I use just a basic straight punch and a hammer and what I would do is I would go ahead and I would start to hammer just that metal wedge okay in one direction reverse the axe head hit it the other direction and work it out back and forth after a little bit you should be able to get a pair of pliers on there and pull that thing out now if you don't have a vise that can be a little bit difficult so um, the other option is to take a good old drill and drill in the front and the back of that step wedge. And then generally from there, you can take again a punch or a pair of pliers and work that out. So I'm quite confident that just hitting it from the top here and driving the old handle downward is going to come out. So I'm not gonna really mess too much with that. Plus you're gonna see why I'm not gonna mess with this because this would come out really quick. But I'm gonna show you some other techniques. So uh, let's say we get the step wedge out or we realize, hey, we don't even need to get it out it's not doing much how do we actually drive the wood out so the first way to do that is again you can take your, your drill you can just continuously drill holes and then you can just again take a punch and just hammer that punch through knocking those shards of wood away that's probably my least favorite way to do it um, I think whenever you start drilling um, if you have a really good seated head on a handle um, it just puts a bunch of holes in there and it makes it more of a nightmare so what I I suggest is take your axe head to Lowe's, Home Depot, Tractor Supply and team it up with an eye bolt, okay? Um, the eye bolt itself is gonna work as the pounding device that is gonna drive this through. I'll show you why I like this so much in a minute. Um, but the reason I say take this with you is because eye bolts come in all different sizes and you don't want the eye bolt so big that it gets jammed inside the eye of the axe as you're, you're hammering it out. Not good, so you wanna sort of team that up. Um, this one to me, off the this looks like it's about a half inch in diameter. Um, so this is like the most used one I have. Um, I use this for almost all the axes. Now, if you don't have a vise, you can just pile up some two by fours. You wanna make sure though, as you hammer the top of this, that the bottom has an opening, right? We don't wanna set this somewhere flat because we need to ultimately drive that out. Now, if your ax head is a little bit beat up and things like this, this might not matter as much, but if it's a really nice ax head, you might not wanna just throw metal on metal and crank this thing tight because you can 
form the eye. So what I do suggest if you're really into this, but I think it's just multiple purpose all over, are these things called soft jaws. They actually, if you put them inside your vise, they're magnetic. They clip on both sides and it's like a, like a rubber plasticky stuff. It will not mar or damage the ax head or any other metal that you have in here. So you can tighten it down really tight, get a good grip on this thing and you'll be set to go. So what we would do with that eyeball is we would place our ax head into our vise just like that. And then why I like the eye bolt is because I put my thumb through the top of it and I don't have to worry about smashing my fingers. It seems like it holds really well and then I just hit the top. And I can tell you already, this is starting to move downward, which if I continue that process, I would just simply drive this out the bottom and we would be good to go for the next step. But let's just say you don't have any of this equipment, you don't have a punch, you don't have an eye bolt, you don't have a vise, maybe you don't even have a drill, or maybe you just wanna spend a day outside. There's something else we can do. So we gotta, we gotta hit the road for this though. So we made the journey out into the woods with our ax head. Now it is time to use the final method to remove this piece of wood that is stuck inside the head and that is the burning method. Now this method itself, I will be honest, can raise some question because when we add heat to metal, we can change the temper of the metal itself. Um, but I can tell you from my personal experience doing this numerous times um, with a bunch of axes that I still use to this day, I have never had any issues um, as far as the metal being too soft or being more brittle or um, the durability of the edge not holding up. It seems to work just fine if you follow these steps. So what we're gonna do, we're not just gonna throw this inside a campfire. We're gonna take the bit edge and we're gonna dig it down into the dirt. So this is going to be covered, just as my hand's covering it now, with dirt, okay? And that dirt is gonna work as an insulator to not allow as much heat to get up to this bit protecting the temper of the ax. What is gonna be exposed though is the wood, okay, the wood set in the eye and we are going to heat that. So as we heat that, this wood is gonna to start to burn and once it starts to burn a little bit, generally you don't have to burn it totally out. You don't have to get this ax red hot. You just gotta to start to burn the wood a little bit and what will happen is it gets loose enough that you can just hit it with a stick. It pops out the backside and then you are good to go. You got the job done. So I'm gonna take my ax head and I'm gonna push it down into the dirt just like that. I could take a piece of my firewood then and stamp it around if I want to get it nice and packed in there. Um, unnecessary step, but it will secure the ax just a little bit better for you and let you get a little bit more dirt between the fire and that edge, okay? So we're gonna get that stomped in just like that. And now we're ready to build our fire around this ax. All right guys, so fire is dying down nicely. I like to check this every so often and I know it's close because I just checked it. And if you look, right here, you're gonna notice that that eye is now empty and that is exactly what we're looking for. So at this point, I don't need to keep cooking this. I can easily just go grab my shovel or a stick and start to back all these flames off and let that fire start to die down. And then uh, once this is all cooled, we're gonna bring the head out and we're gonna be back to the shop. And there you go, the ax head is all ready for us to take back to the shop. Burned out perfectly, no junk down on the inside of the eye. We're gonna take this back, we're gonna start cleaning it up, get the handle on, get it sharpened, chopping. Okay, great, all right, uh, back to the shop. All right, so we're back at the shop with the ax head. So now I'm gonna do a once over on the ax head. I'm gonna make sure I look at the bit itself, make sure I don't have any cracks or anything like that in there, for safety reasons. Traveling backwards I want to look at the eye and I want to make sure there's no burrs on any side of the eye because again we're gonna be driving that ax handle in if there are we're gonna clean that up with a file or sandpaper or a grinder and then we're gonna to go to the back pole of the ax and we're going to take a look at that now the back of this ax does have some mushrooming and that means that they were pounding metal on metal with this ax causing it to deform in the back um, this this one is not really bad. If it bothers you a lot, again, you can take an angle grinder or a file and you can file that and reshape the back end of this ax. Um, if it is really, really bad, I highly recommend to get rid
rid of all that um, nastiness in the back and reshape it. For this axe though, I think um, it gives it a little bit of character for whatever reason or wherever it came from. Um, the person that was using it that way, I mean, they gave it a little bit rugged look. So I'm gonna keep it like that. I think it looks pretty neat like that. Um, it's not gonna hurt the axe whatsoever. It's not gonna hurt me whatsoever, so we're good to go. So with all that said, time to actually, I like at this point now to clean up um, the metal itself. So a couple ways you can do that. You can just get a wire brush and give it a scrape. That will clean it up pretty good. It'll get all that surface rust off, some of that dirt and things like that. You can also get sandpaper. I recommend going to an automotive store and getting automotive sandpaper and um, wetting it and then just working that over. Now, depending on how much you want to work this is gonna depend how shiny it gets. You can literally take this down to a mirror shine. I don't do that with any of my axes. I just like that little more rustic backcountry look. So what I normally do is I get my angle grinder out with my wire brush attachment and I just give it a once over. I don't grind in hard. Again, um, this already has patina built into it so I want to try to keep as much of that um, intact as possible to protect the metal when I'm out in the field. So as you're going to see here in a second, I just lightly run this over. I wipe it clean. I'll add some oil to it and um, get this thing looking nice and then we'll go pick a handle. All right, so the ax head is cleaned up at this point. It looks really nice. So now time for a handle. So handles are always one of those things that you're like, oh geez, where am I getting? Because the local hardware stores anymore, like people putting ax handles on are, are very few. <laughs> so we are of the select few doing this. So for years, I struggled with finding good ax handles. Who is making ax handles now that I'm pumped about? Because I've been following him since he's been in his little shed in his backyard is Liam Huffman. Um, I'm gonna show you some of the handles. I have a whole variety of different, this is my personal stash. So um, a whole different variety. You can go on his website. He does um, great work. I've never gotten a bad handle from him. Um, we have short straight handles. We have all different curved handles, different lengths. Full, look at this. Look at that full size felling ax, which this is for a very special project I'm working on. So lots of different handles here. Um, he also, because he makes axes, knows enough about axes to put the proper information on the website as far as fit and stuff like that for the eye. So you go ahead, you can measure the eye. If you don't know how to do that, when you go on his site to buy a handle, um, he will have the dimensions and then you just measure yours and you'll figure it all out nice and easy. Okay, so now is time to actually fit the ax handle into the head. Now, if you get a handle that is close to the eye or the proper eye size, you should be able to press this in pretty easily, okay? Um, if you don't, you have to take a little bit of material off. Not a big problem. Um, I use a rasp. This is just a four-in-one rasp, okay, that is very nice and easy to handle, coarse to fine. And I'll come in here and I start towards the very, very top, and I'll just take a little bit off. I'll put this in the vise, as you're going to see here in a minute. Um, it just it's a little bit easier and then I will slowly start to work this handle on now my goal here is to have part of the handle sticking out the top of the axe head we don't want this flush cut we do want this sticking out the top and it should fit quite tightly it shouldn't be so tight that um, you need 47 jackhammers to get this thing out but it should be snug and fit that that head's not just flopping on and off but again not so tight that you can't get the wedge or anything else in, okay? So nice and snug is gonna be our best fit for that. Alright, 
So you can see at this point, when I wiggle this, I'm already getting the ax head seated onto the handle itself. So that is pretty good overall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the fine side here and I'm just gonna touch up these sides because I can tell these cheeks are a little bit thicker than I need for that ax handle itself. Clean that up and then we're gonna seat this handle. Okay, so as I seat this handle, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a board and I'm going to hold the ax this way and I'm literally gonna do that. So the inertia of the force going downward is gonna force this handle down into the ax head. Okay, now a couple things I'm gonna be looking for. If you can look closely, you can see that I'm starting to get this little bit of a curl. That means that this head is biting into this more than I would like, okay? A little bit of that's fine towards the end, but initially we don't want that. It's gonna bind up too much and possibly split out our handle, so we don't want that. So I can cut this free or I could pop the head back off. In my case, I'm gonna cut this and file just a little bit in this section to get that working and seating into the head properly. Now, um, two things when we're seating the head. We wanna make sure that the head is squared up to the handle, okay? So we don't want the head leaning forward and we don't want the head sticking up this way. We want it nice and square squared up to the handle itself. And then we also wanna make sure that left to right is straight. Um, if you buy a good handle, generally you don't have to worry too much about this. Um, if you are dealing a lot with that and you have to mess with the handle a lot, good chance that on an old ax like this, the eye is twisted or bent. Um, so that can cause a little bit of a problem. So at this point you can see that that ax handle is coming through the top of the ax. That is what we are looking for. Um, as for wedges, good hardwood wedge. You still can luckily buy these at hardware stores. I believe Liam also sells them on his website. So check that out too while you're buying your handles. Just buy the wedges for these axes. Then you don't have to deal with cutting them or trimming them or anything like that. Um, and then we're going to go on to sharpening. So this thing feels good. It's on there nice and steady. Um, it's just it's looking so nice. Nice. It's so well balanced. This was it. Nice tight wedge in there. Mushroomed out a little bit, all looking nice. So now we are very close to finished up. All I'm gonna do is put an edge on this. Again, I can use my grinders or you can use a file. Um, the, the bevel itself of this is still there, which would be a convex grind. So we're not doing a super steep angle. It's more like there's cheeks and it comes up just for durability of the edge itself. So I'm gonna work on that now um, with a file. It shouldn't take much. There's no chips, no dents, anything in here that I gotta work out. So I'm just gonna take my time, work over this. We'll get this thing nice and sharp and carve a little bit with it. Alright, so my axe edge is all sharpened up and then I hit it on the strop. Um, we do have it sharp enough that I can cut paper. So pretty cool that I could get it that sharp like that. There you go. We want to go all the way through, nice and easy. All right, and there you go, bushcrafters, axe lovers, outdoor enthusiasts. The axe is all finished up. Now I'll put a couple close-up shots of it. You can see I cleaned up this back end. I cut it, I sanded it, put a little bevel on the end. Really, really nice. And then uh, this thing, razor sharp, so I'm gonna have to make a sheath up for that. Um, the last step that I do with my axes though is I take some boiled linseed oil, of course, I rub it on, it'll clean off any little bit of dirt I have left on there from just working. It'll condition the handle a little bit more. Make sure you lots of boiled linseed oil here and lots here to absorb up into that handle. And then uh, we are good to go. So little ax project, that is how I restore an ax that I find at a yard sale or a flea market or that is gifted to me, just something old. And then um, be on my way with it. So another little beauty for the collection. 
right, so that's today's video. Um, again, check out Hoffman Blacksmithing for Liam's handles. If you get something or you talk to him, tell him I sent him your way from this video. And then, uh, cause it, they are, they're awesome handles. And uh, check out my website, coolcrackerbushcraft.com for all our cool stuff and our classes and our merchandise and all that and everything. It's all good. Hit like and subscribe and until the next video, stay in the woods.